consume way too much stuff. We are living in our own piles of waste. But that's not the point of this video. I decluttered all of this and more. Today we're going to be focusing on clothing. The actual amount of clothing produced every year is unknown, but it is estimated that it is about 80 to 100 million tons of clothing per year. This is 400% more than at the start of the 2000s, just two decades ago. This equates to more than 11 million tons of textile waste in the US alone. That's 82 pounds per citizen per year. The fashion industry is the second largest polluter in the world. It contributes to water pollution, heavy water consumption, microfibers ending up in our water from materials like polyester. The chemicals added to our clothes affect us, the air, the water, and the soil. Of course, there's greenhouse gas emissions from extracting the materials and the countless plants around the world. It leads to soil degradation, rainforest destruction, and the employees at fast fashion companies are underpaid and work in terrible conditions. So what can we do about this problem? Can we even help fight this? The answer is yes. And the first thing I would suggest, which is probably not very realistic for most, is to just consume less. I think the journey towards minimalism and more simple living is possible for every single person, but I know that everyone's not at that place right now in their lives, so I'm gonna offer you some other suggestions as well. We are going to be exploring minimalism a little bit later in this video, so stay tuned if you're interested in that. But the first option, if you still want to buy stuff, is to shop secondhand. Shopping secondhand is by far the most environmentally friendly way to keep buying things. When you shop secondhand, you're not contributing to the pollution that comes with producing that item in the first place. Buying something brand new, you're still contributing to the extraction of that material, the production of that material, the shipping of that material, and all that stuff. But when you're buying something secondhand, you're not contributing to that at all. And in today's day and age, you don't just have to go to a thrift shop. You can actually do a lot of secondhand shopping online on sites like eBay, Depop, ThreadUp, and so many more. I'll leave a lot of those resources linked down below. Choose clothes that are made in countries where their factories have tighter environmental standards. Choose organic, natural, and sustainable materials that don't require chemicals and artificial materials to be produced. You can also choose fibers that require less water consumption. I will leave all of the resources I used linked down below if you'd like to do your own research. You can also buy better quality items that will last you years as opposed to just months. And buy things that you truly love and not something that you think you might wear or things that you're kind of iffy about. Choosing things that you actually love means you will actually care for those items and you'll want to keep those items for years and years and years. Another important thing is to learn how to mend. Mending your clothes, of course, keeps things out of landfill for much longer and is just a very valuable life skill to have. If something is irreparable, see if you can recycle it instead of sending it to landfill. And of course, if you have items that are just gently loved, gently used, please don't throw it away. You can donate it yourself, you can even sell it and make a little bit of money. There are so many more options before throwing something into the trash can. Sure, as we learned in one of my recent videos, recycling isn't the best option, but it can be a lot better in most cases. But why am I even bringing this up? And that is because I haven't bought a new piece of clothing in nearly two years. And what I mean is I haven't bought a brand new piece of clothing from fast fashion, from unsustainable sources. When I buy a new piece of clothing, my first stop is always secondhand. Whether that be a thrift shop, Facebook marketplace, or any of the online sources that I listed earlier, I always check secondhand first. If secondhand doesn't work for me, I go to a sustainable brand and sustainable company. That's a tricky topic and requires a lot of explanation. I will make a future video on that if you're interested, but basically I have criteria that I set for myself when I buy my clothing. Is it made of a sustainable material like cotton? or linen as opposed to something like polyester? Is it made from a sustainable company that offsets their carbon, that uses renewable energy and things like that? And where is this product being produced? Is it being produced in ethical working conditions? Are their employees being paid fairly? And how far is it gonna have to be shipped in order to get to me? Your criteria can be anything that you want to set it for, but that's just what I use when I buy new clothing. I've been exploring minimalism for about two years now. Ever since I moved to Japan and ever since I joined the military and we were only allowed to bring one book bag worth of things, I've really had to explore what do I need, what do I truly love, what will I wear? And the truth is we don't need a lot. There are a lot of benefits to living minimally and you don't have to use the title minimalist. You can just live more minimally, you can live below your means, more sustainably, whatever you wanna call it, you don't have to have a title. But basically we save a lot of money. I save a lot of time because I have less stuff to clean. I have a lot less clutter, a lot more free space in my mind, honestly not having to deal with so much stuff. Plus, less clothes equals less laundry. And I don't know about you, but I hate doing laundry. But again, in this video, we're not just focusing on stuff, we're gonna be focusing on clothes. And on June 1st, Dan and I are starting the 333 or triple three challenge. But basically what this challenge is, is we will keep 33 articles of clothing for three months. The rest will be boxed up and put away somewhere. So I know I said that I was decluttering to prepare for the 333 challenge, but we both counted our clothes and Neither of us have 33 items. <laughs> and this is if you're not counting undergarments, sleepwear, loungewear, and exercise clothes. So, 
we're not doing the challenge. Sorry for the hype. But now he's decluttering because, you know, same reason I decluttered. I realized I didn't have to wear all that stuff. That's all I have to say. Sorry for the hype and the disappointment. Enjoy the rest of the video. <laughs> Over the past few weeks, I've been really focusing on my clothes. What do I own? What do I wear? What do I love? And that's what I'm doing today is I'm going to be decluttering some of my clothes because I've been looking at some of them over the past few weeks and I've realized I haven't worn this in years. I don't really love it anymore. It doesn't fit me, all those sorts of things. I want to do this declutter today because I want my choice in three days to be a lot easier. When I'm narrowing down what clothes I'm gonna be keeping for three months, I don't wanna to have to choose between 100 articles of clothing. It would be a lot easier if I was only choosing from 60 or 70 articles of clothing. I don't really know how much I own. Basically, I don't wanna to have to do all of this thinking in three days when I could do some of it now and some of it later. <laughs> I'm just making it a lot easier for me mentally. The goal with my wardrobe, functionality, practicality, and comfort. Those are my top three. I want to be able to wear a shirt with three different pairs of pants and make it four outfits, four outfits, four outfits. I'm sorry, what? Comfort is always my number one. Yes, functionality and practicality kind of go hand in hand. Like for example, I can wear this shirt with black jeans, with light jeans, with dark jeans. It's very practical. Unlike this lemon shirt, I only have about one option with it. So that's what we're doing in this video. We're gonna be decluttering my wardrobe. I will leave all of my other Declutter With Me videos linked down below in my most recent one, which I decluttered every day for six weeks. One last thing I wanna touch on is that it is just crazy that even at the beginning of this year before I did that six week declutter, I thought I was a minimalist going into this year and I did that big declutter and now I'm gonna do this wardrobe challenge and it's just really testing me to see that I can go even more minimal still it's just crazy that how much stuff we think we need here's one of my methods if you can see my hangers some of them are forwards and some of them are backwards that is one of my personal decluttering methods. I've literally been doing it for like five or six years since high school. So say at the start of 2020, I had all of my hangers hanging backward. Every time I wore a shirt, I would put the hanger on forwards. So that way all the hangers are still remaining backwards six months into the year. I know I probably will not be wearing it unless it's like a sweater that, I'm, that I just haven't been wearing because it's been warm. So that really helps me personally declutter like every couple months even. So I am gonna keep a couple nice shirts even though I haven't worn them recently just because I know I will wear them again. So what I'm doing is I'm taking everything off of my hangers. First, I'm gonna put them into a pile of keep and don't keep. Everything that I'm not keeping will be donated by the way. But I just kind of want to analyze things all laid out instead of hanging up. And then I'm gonna move on to my dresser. When it comes to functionality as well, I want something to be able to be casual, but also be able to be dressed up if it needs to be. And like I said, here's like all of my sweaters and my winter stuff. I'm not gonna actually declutter any of this right now unless I know for certain that I don't wanna keep it because it's not winter right now, so I don't know if I'm going to use this again or not. Now I have three piles, a, a donate for sure pile, a I will wear this all year round pile, and a winter keep pile. Now is probably not the time to donate sweaters to the thrift store. And I guess that's kind of the thing too, is I've learned with a lot of my declutters. Um, with my last wardrobe declutter, I used the Marie Kondo method, which was, you know, does it spark joy? Do I love this item? And like, I love both of those pairs of pants that I just decluttered, but I haven't worn them in months. So I think that's part of it too, is do I love it? Do I, does it spark joy? And also do I use it? That's something that's important too, I think. Where I, I just encourage you to set your own rules. You don't have to follow my rules. You don't have to follow Marie Kondo. You, can, you don't have to follow anybody. You can follow your own rules for minimalism, for decluttering. Do what works best for you. I'm getting rid of way more than I thought I would. I know I said I don't use this dresser anymore, but I do use it for a few miscellaneous things, so let's see what we have in here. All right, that's it. Now let's look at all of this stuff that I have. Here's what I decided to keep. That is six pair of pants, including the hiking pants, and nine shirts, and these are just my nice shirts. I also kept three dresses, three sweaters. I'm also keeping this shirt, as well as I think there's one more in the wash that I'm keeping. 
two pair of sweatpants, four long sleeve shirts, and one nice long sleeve dress shirt. I'm also keeping five pair of leggings, five pair of shorts, seven shirts, technically six. This one's a long sleeve shirt, but it's not like a nice shirt, so it doesn't get hung up. And then as well, some other nicer pairs of shorts. I am keeping six of those. That's all I'm keeping. Now let's see what I'm getting rid of three dresses. I lost count of the pairs of pants and leggings, probably like a dozen at least. Two sweaters and then probably like another 10 or so shirts, one pair of shorts, and then like five miscellaneous swimsuit pieces. So I'm getting rid of a lot. Again, like I say in all of my declutter videos, I think I'm a minimalist. And then I go through and I declutter literally an entire garbage bag's worth of clothes. Absolutely insane. And even better news now that I'm down to probably 33 articles of clothing before even having to narrow it down. Awesome, that makes me very happy. Yay! That's what I wanted to accomplish with this declutter, so that's very exciting. Now I had to put all this mess away. Be right back. All right, everything is back in my dresser. Everything is hung back up. That's it. I mean, I have my, my sweaters hiding back here, but I only use them in the winter, but that, that right there is all that I own now that gets hung up. That's pants and shirts. I think it was nine shirts that need to be hung up and six pair of pants. Oh my gosh, it just literally blows my mind how much someone can change. But one last thing I wanted to talk about was random t-shirts like so. No one's gonna buy like t-shirts from an event. This is an event shirt and this is a shirt from my old workplace that no one else on this island has worked at. It would be pointless to donate those items because the thrift store would probably just throw them away because they're relevant and they won't sell. So what I'm gonna do with these is I'm gonna put them in my scrap fabric pile and I will use them for stuff like making removable makeup wipes, making um, reusable produce bags. They're special to one person for one event only. So they have to be thrown away at the end of their lives. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this declutter with me. I love seeing my own progress. Looking at my last wardrobe declutter to this one, an entire trash bag full of clothes. I cannot wait to see where we are in two more years or three more years. It's just insane. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any more questions about fast fashion, the impact of the fashion industry, the impact of clothing, please leave your questions down below. I'd love to do a more in-depth video about the impact that fashion has on the planet. That's all I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, remember that these small changes you make have a big impact in the long run. Bye guys. If I do need to buy, if I do need to buy, you good? You wanna go in the closet? Well, we better record at least. Ready? Here you go. Come on. <laughs> Goodbye, I need this background for the shot. Are you recording? Okay. This is crooked. Stop, Mochi, you're so loud. <laughs>